The way I want to set up the database is for it to be recreated each time I run the application. This way, each time I run the application, I will have the same set of data or the same set of records. We will be able to, of course, get them, update them and create new ones. But since this is just a tutorial, I want to use the same data set for each of the demonstration. Obviously, in production, you wouldn't want to do this. You would want to keep your new records in the database. So if that's what you want, you don't have to follow this video at all. But if you want to start with the same set of data each time you start the application, then uh, this is how you do it. So let's go to program.cs because that's where all the magic will happen. So here we create the host builder and then we run it. So in our case, before we run it, we need to do some uh, migration stuff here. So we will build the host builder, but then we will make sure that we will recreate the database. And instead of just building it, I'm going to assign the result of it to a variable. So I'll call it host. So now I can use this to migrate the database. And I'll wrap everything in a using statement. And let's create a variable scope that will equal what we have in our host. And we'll go to the services in the host and then dot create scope. Now we have to bring in the Microsoft.extension.dependency injection namespace for the create scope to work. And inside the using statement, we'll use a try catch block to try to add the migration. So let's add the catch as well. And if we catch an exception, we can catch it in the variable ex. And if something goes wrong, we can log it and see what went wrong. So we'll create a variable for the logger. And to log it, we'll go to scope dot service provider and then get required service. And the service we want is for the logger. So that's the I logger for our program. That's our class that we are using here. Let me just move this a little so you can see everything on one line. So now we have the logger ready and now we can log the error. So logger dot log error and we log the exception message as well as our own and, and simply say something like an error occurred while migration was in progress. So this is when something goes wrong with the migration. In our try, we will of course try to perform the migration itself. So we'll create a variable for our context and we'll go again to our scope because we are in the using statement where I created the variable scope that was created from the services in the host. And we'll go again to service provider just like we did for the error when we catch the exception. But this time we go to get service. And the service we want is for a DB context, and that is our band album context. And for that, we need to bring in the namespace, of course. And the namespace is in DB context folder. So that brings the DB context for our database. And now we can use it to delete the database. So it's going to be context dot database and the command is ensure deleted so that will delete the database and then we will recreate it so we'll do context dot database dot migrate and migrate needs a namespace for the entity framework core so again we delete the database each time the application runs and migrate it with the seed data that we provided in our DB context. So when we perform any of the CRUD operations, we will perform it on the same set of records. And again, this is not something you would do 
In production, obviously, you want to keep the database updated, but this is a tutorial, and I think it is easier for you to see what is happening with the API calls when we use the same records for each of the calls. So the host is created and built, and then either the migration succeeded or we log an exception. Either way, at the end, after using statement, we need to run the host. So we'll use host.run. All right, I think we are now ready to actually create the database. So let's do that next.